Howdy doody everybody, my name is Kev Gooey and welcome back to Seabed. Buy everything we need once we get there. Good idea. Hmm. As we followed the guide map, we found ourselves in a wide hall. Be more expensive there to buy stuff or... You know, well I guess it is, if, you know, if you don't just bring your own clothes. There are check-in counters at the end of it, and the flight board in the middle, dangling midway between the ceiling and the ground. I left my bag on the ground and took a few steps toward the board to confirm our boarding gate. Takago soon followed suit. A melody rang out from the speakers at the top, signaling the beginning of another boarding announcement. I wasn't listening too closely at first, but I could confirm the details from the simple English announcement and the actual flight board. Don't you think it's this? It is. Finding a big round clock in the middle of the hall, I confirmed how much time we still had. Let's go. I picked up my pace again. Whoa, don't leave me here. And zoom. I go cried out behind me. Wait, how much time do they have left? Oh well. Ooh, some nice jazz music. As our late night airplane landed, we passed a desolate corridor to reach passport control. Ago, who had been relatively energetic at the start of our long trip, grew more and more silent as nightfall came. She was now merely wobbling behind me, her steps unsteady. I showed my passport and ticket to an angry looking official. Stepped into the dark of night as we left the airport, but the graffiti on the concrete walls, the wide roads, and the alien smell of the humid air made it clear to us that we, are, we were now in a different part of the world. I made Takako regain some energy as we boarded our bus. She sat down right behind the driver's seat and acted as though she was listening to the English conversation of the driver and the guide, giving solemn nods at time dinner rows. Huh. Ha ha ha. What did they say? I think they're talking about going somewhere with someone. Let me guess, you haven't the foggiest idea what they just said. Look, I could understand a few words. You practice more and translate for me. Yeah, whatever. Drops of rain spatter, pattered against the wide front window. Did they land? Oh, they weren't at the airport. Did they, were they at the airport? No, they're at the bus station, right? I wonder if the weather is going to be alright tomorrow. Here, yeah, the weather changes real fast around here. Should be okay, I think. Or unless they landed. I don't know. There was, a, no, there was no point trying to argue with such a positive, if groundless, notion. I shifted my eyes out to the scenery outside, noticing some unfamiliar southern plants among the trees lining the streets. As I spent my time absentmindedly gazing at the window, we eventually re reached the hotel. Oh, I guess they landed. I'm 100% beat. I go through her bag on the ground and dive face first into the bed. You know, I'll check the safe in the bathroom and sorted out my baggage. Th there's a safe in the bathroom? You don't want to confirm our plan for tomorrow? Just wake me up when it's time to go. Are you okay with that bed? Ha. Ah. Morning, wake up. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. okay. So it, does, it doesn't seem like it's in the present time, I don't think. Because if it was in the present time, they would have been sleeping together, right? Because they were sleeping together, um, yeah, in the, like the first scene we saw they slept together. But now they're sleeping apart? I think it's later down the flashback. I feel like these are actual real photos. They're just, um, edited to this design. Uh, that's, just, that's just my, uh, thinking. I go part of the currents in a single violent swing. If I'm wrong, I do apologize. <laughs> if someone actually drew this, I do apologize. Turning in the direction of the noise with my eyes still half opened, I was welcomed by a beautiful blue sky beyond the window. That's a snake, isn't it? Hey, I found a snake, Sachi. I go came over and began banging the area of the bed just next to my pillow. Go have breakfast. Where? I think I saw a fast food place from the balcony. We can go see what they have, and if it sucks, look for another place. Let me change first. Hmm. 
Does it have a letter on it? Is it is it big and yellow and red? Hmm. Hurry up. The the pet the pet at toi. That's a prisa. Jeez, give me a break. Be undressing myself while complaining about my loud mouth roommate. In the end, we decided to buy hot dogs from a nearby convenience store for breakfast. Dasha came in either spicy or normal flavors, and you could choose pickles, cabbages, and shredded onion for the vegetable topping. Ooh! Bread felt a bit soggy to the touch, though, through the silver foil it was in, but the strong taste of the other ingredients solved that problem. Our girl was panicking over having accidentally drenched her thing in mustard. In a brother who wasn't into spicy cuisine, she tried to eliminate the taste by adding more ketchup. Later, she told me she ended up putting on so much she could taste nothing other than that. In any case, it was big enough to quell her morning hunger. Let's go to the beach. I go blurted that right out as we left the convenience store. Right now? You got your swimsuit? And the oil? And forget the water goggles either. Ooh, the oil. I have everything, but I thought we agreed to explore the town in the morning. There's no time like the present. We like swimming right now, yay! I caught Tiger Girl by the hand as she was about to stride off in the direction of the beach. Wait. Remembering Tiger Girl's love for playing with water, I decided to stop her for now. Even as a child, the mere sight of a pot of water, be it a river, rice paddy, or a sea, would purge all thoughts from her mind safe for swimming and perhaps looking for marine ma animals. She'd keep at it until the sun had already set. Wow. Let's just stick to the plan. Eh, why? Wouldn't you prefer not having any other plans on your mind when you go swimming so you can take your mind or take your time and relax until it gets dark? I see, you got a point there, Sachi. Anyway, we had that map with all the cool places marked on it, right? I took the map out of my bag. Yeah, I remember that. There's a shopping district right next to the hotel. I'd like to do some window shopping there. Seriously? That's just what I'd want to do personally. Aren't you hoping to visit some sea cave as well? The one that's hot with tourists? Ah, the one recommended for couples, right? I'm up for that one. I read they also had a firing range. I go pointed to the red circle she drew on our map. Anyway, let's visit all the spots we picked in order. Okay, whatever. Yeah, I mean, that couple, right? For couples, but like... Yeah, I still think that they aren't together right now. Because in, before she said roommate? So, you know, is there anything else added? With her permission, we started down the wide and smooth slope in the direction of the closest mark on our map. The clear, cloudless blue sky above seemed to mock my concerns from yesterday as the warmth of the sun pierced through the air, caressing my skin. i never seen the sun look so bright before. Ooh! That looks fun. The water scooter ahead of us allowed a loud buzz, jerking forward the banana boat that Takako and I were on. The banana boat? Wahaha! You could hear Takako crackling behind me. After we took care of all our plans in the first half of the day, we left our shopping bags at the hotel and went straight to the beach. Takako found a banana boat attraction pretty much the moment we reached the place and had us checked in. It seemed to have just finished its previous round and was getting prepared for the next one. Tago pulled on my hand and before I knew it, I was sitting atop the thing. Water scooter's driver looked back at us and gave it an okay sign. I responded with the same sign myself. He then turned back and began to accelerate. Causing our banana boat to momentarily sway back and forth like it was about to sink. Dashi, wait, I fell! I turned around to see Tago who was supposed to be sitting behind me, prone with her lower half dragging in the water. You're gonna fall off if you keep playing around. Uh oh. Meanwhile, the banana boat was still swinging left and right. Kept getting uh, swept sideways by the waves that the water scooter ahead of us caused. And every time that happened, a spray of sparkling water would shoot above us. All the while, Tiger was still being pulled on the water behind me. I'm gonna fall! Say something! The second water scooter drew closer to us. There were two people on it, with the one riding in the back holding a camera. It seems like they're about to take pictures of us. Eh? Where? To the left, try not to fall before they finish, okay? They hurry it up. Richard's peace sign. Want me to do it here? 
<laughs> Cameraman gave an okay sign and lowered the camera. Aww. So nice. And she's gone. I'm gonna end the episode here, everybody. We'll find out in the next episode uh, where she went. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you guys didn't, please slime that like button and subscribe down below for more awesome videos. Thank you everybody for watching this episode and you will hear me in the next one. Bye!